Over the last few years, performance tracking has gotten more difficult with all the changes to the privacy rules and regulations on the web. To be quite honest, we advertisers got away with quite a lot that we probably shouldn't have, so it's time to start changing our ways. But just because things are getting more difficult doesn't mean it's impossible. Google Ads recently rolled out what they're calling enhanced conversion tracking, which allows us to track performance back to our Google Ads campaigns in a privacy compliant way. So in this video, we're going to give you a quick rundown of what enhanced conversion tracking is and show you how you can apply it to your account. I want to start off by giving a quick overview of what enhanced conversions are and what the goal is of this new setup so that as we're going through the implementation in an account in just a little bit, you'll understand what the goals are and what we're trying to accomplish. The example Google gives for how enhanced conversions for web works is in four steps. First, somebody who is signed in to their Google account views your YouTube ad. This could also be somebody going to Google and conducting a search because enhanced conversions also work for search logged in users as well. That user then visits your website and converts, ideally filling out a form, which is either going to be a lead for a lead generation account or most likely the billing and shipping information that comes with an e-commerce account. Step three is kind of a requirement as well as a step. The conversion tag that you're utilizing captures determined information like an email address, hashes that data or anonymizes it, and then sends it back to Google. In the last step, Google then utilizes that anonymized data to take the email address from the person who filled out your form to match it against Google accounts to try and correlate the conversion action to that Google account and then analyze their activity on YouTube and Google search to match up the behavior to the conversion itself. So effectively, we're trying to gather that user's information and match it back to their Google account based on the activity that they had and attribute conversion performance that way, rather than relying on the third party site tag exclusively. There are three requirements for you to utilize enhanced conversions. The first is that you need to be using site-wide tagging, either through Google Ads or Google Tag Manager. You need to have your Google remarketing pixel across all of the different pages of your website for this to work. That will come up in one of the steps that we have later, where we have to validate that our tracking is across the website by entering our domain. Next, we need to be using Google Ads conversion tracking. One very common practice that I have started to employ in my accounts is to almost always just use Google Analytics goals and import them. Unfortunately, that is not going to work for this type of tracking. You have to be using the Google Ads conversion tracking to leverage enhanced conversions in your account. Lastly, you need to be collecting user information along with your conversion actions. Basically, you need to be asking for the name and email address, maybe some other information. Otherwise, there's nothing to match back to that Google account and there wouldn't be anything to match anyway. There are three implementation options for enhanced conversions, automatic, manual, and API. For the sake of this video, I'm going to do mostly the automatic setup, but it does have some manual components. I will not be discussing the API because that is far too advanced, but we do have some resources to help you out with that later on. So with that, let's hop into an account and start to set up enhanced conversions in Google Ads. I'm logged into the account that I'm going to use to set this up, and I've already navigated to the conversions page in the interface. If you don't know where that is, you can come up here to tools and settings and the conversion option is going to be at the top of the measurement column. The first thing I want to point out is the conversion source because that will determine which conversion actions you are eligible to opt into enhanced conversion tracking. The first option at the top named form capture is a website or imported from clicks conversion source. If I click into this conversion action, we can see only a limited set of settings that are available here and none of them have anything to do with enhanced conversions. This is only because of the source of the conversion action. So if at any point you're trying to figure out why there's no enhanced conversion option for your conversion goal, it's more than likely because it's not coming from the Google Ads conversion tag, which is necessary for setting up enhanced conversions. So I'm gonna hop back to the previous page. And based on the note I mentioned about the conversion source, you probably determined that this thank you conversion in the sign up section is the only conversion action that will be eligible for enhanced conversions. So if I click on that one, now the settings look a little bit different. We have a expanded option of the first window at the top. There are a number of different pieces there. You can see the tag setup, which will be indicative of the types of conversions that can utilize enhanced conversions, as well as the last option down here, which is about enhanced conversions. So if I open this up, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. 
To start utilizing enhanced conversions, we just need to check the box here. We need to agree to the policies that Google has for these actions. I'm going to click Agree. And now we need to determine which type of setup we want to use. As I mentioned, there is an API option, but we will not be using that today. So we're going to click the Global Site Tag or Google Tag Manager, and we're going to click Next. As I mentioned earlier, we now need to put in our website to confirm that the Google Remarketing Tag is active on all pages. So I'm going to type in the URL here and then check URL. At this stage, if your account was eligible for automatic setup of enhanced conversions, it would show up here. In just a little bit, we'll talk about why this account is not eligible for the automatic setup of enhanced conversions. But for now, we'll go into kind of the blended option of manual setup and choose the Google Site tag and click Next. I then get to choose the customer information I want to send with enhanced conversions. So if I want to send email, I just check the box and then I have to match it up to the JavaScript portion that matches the email information on my website. Depending on how your website is constructed, you can also choose the CSS selector instead if you want to do that and have it automatically look for the variable that will import the email address that you want associated with the account. The same information would be available for name and email address. You need to match up each of the different options on your website to the different parameters on the web page that corresponds with each of the different actions in here. That's the setup if you want to use the global site tag. But let's say that rather than choosing global site tag up at the top, I actually chose Google Tag Manager. Since I clicked edit, it threw me all the way back to the beginning. So I'll click here and click next. I will recheck the website URL. And now let's choose the option for Google Tag Manager. We'll click next. And rather than setting things up here, we'll be prompted to open Google Tag Manager and set up enhanced conversions there. So if I click on Open Google Tag Manager, in the Tag Manager account, since I'm trying to set up enhanced conversions for that single Google Ads conversion action, I need to navigate to that conversion tag in the platform. That's going to be this Google Ads conversion tracking for this account. So if I click on this, to set up enhanced conversions, I then need to come up here and click the pencil to edit tag configuration. We'll skip down a little bit and the option that we need to choose is going to be include user provided data for your website. Now I need to choose which type of user provided data variable I want. I can then click new variable and now we're into an entire process that I'm not going to go super far in depth into for this video because it'll be different for every different user. That said, you can see that the different manual configuration fields are going to be pretty similar to what we saw in Google Ads. You need to set up the email address, the phone number, and then the name and address fields that would be corresponded to on your website. That's going to be for this manual configuration option. There is a second level option down here at the bottom called code. And if I click this, now you can see that I need to choose a data source, and then I'll choose number of the different event actions or the different click classes from the website and set up that way. As I mentioned, this is going to be far too in-depth for what I'm going to do in this video, but in just a minute I'll show you how to get to this page where you can set up enhanced conversions for web manually with Google Tag Manager, and there are specific sections that will help you through each of these. So if I continue scrolling down, this first section of three links here is going to show you how to set up conversions manually in Google Tag Manager. That will correspond to this manual configuration option within Google Tag Manager. And then the second set of links down here is going to show you how to set up enhanced conversions using code in Google Tag Manager, which I'm sure you can guess, corresponds to the second option with code and how you need to set each of those different pieces up. Once you've set up all of your variables, you just need to click save, which I won't do, and then you'll eventually go all the way through and publish your pixel on your site to make sure that it is set up and ready to track enhanced conversions. As I mentioned earlier, the easiest option would be to utilize the automatic implementation where Google identifies the variables for your email, phone number, name and address for you so you don't have to set up those manual configurations either with the Google conversion tag or in Google Tag Manager. But there are some reasons why automatic might not show and you'll have to do those manually instead. First, if there's no customer data detected on the conversion page for that conversion action, you'll have to set things up manually. Now in this scenario, Google refers to the conversion page, what we usually would call the thank you page. So just keep that in mind as you're reading any of the help articles. They're going to be looking at the thank you page rather than the landing page where somebody would theoretically convert on that conversion action. The second reason it might not offer the automatic setup is because the conversion action fires on many different pages where customer data is stored in a variety of ways. 
Think about this if you have a number of different conversion actions like an ebook sign up, an online purchase, and a free trial on your website, but you're using the same Google Ads conversion code for all three of those actions, and you've just set up different rules in Google Tag Manager to fire on different URLs. Since you're more than likely asking for different information and you could be storing information in different ways, in theory, a free trial would be stored a little bit differently maybe than an ebook download. It's hard for Google to find a uniform solution to how that conversion is tracking actions and matching that information back to user profiles. So if that's the way you have your account set up and you want to use enhanced conversions, you'll need to either make adjustments to those thank you pages conversion pages, as Google calls them, to store all the data in the same way, or you'll need to create individual conversion tags in Google Ads for each of those actions to track them separately. The last option is there's simply not enough conversion data for the automatic setup option to learn from. Google, just like any other machine, has to have a decent amount of information to be able to make decisions and infer information. And if you don't have enough volume on the individual conversion action you're trying to set up, there just simply isn't enough for Google to go on. The last thing I want to leave you with are the links to the help sections, whether it's for setting conversions up manually through Tag Manager or the global site tag, and then a link to the enhanced conversion setup via Google's API if you want to go that route. Setting up enhanced conversions can be a bit intimidating because you need to know how your website codes information into the different thank you pages that you have available. It might be beneficial for you to walk through this with your developer so you can ask them any questions as you're working on setting this up. But overall, I have found the help articles from Google to be very useful with step-by-step -step instructions on how you can set things up. Ideally, your website just isn't too confusing for you to be able to figure it out on your own. Just like everything else in digital marketing, our tracking capabilities are going to be constantly changing as the political and privacy environments change to fit users' needs and make the web safe for everybody. The best advertisers are going to be the ones who are able to keep up with the changing technology and are still able to generate and show performance from the online campaigns, and enhanced conversions just one additional way for us to be able to do that. I know we didn't go through a complete setup and this topic is a bit more in the weeds maybe than some of the other videos that we've had. So please feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments and we'll do our best to clarify anything that we've missed. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.